this one little plant, how many sphinx moth immature stage uh, individuals there are in this one little plant. So that is a banded sphinx egg right there. Because boy, they are camouflaged. But look at the eggs, guys. Two more eggs before I even saw this big caterpillar or bigger. This is a third instar caterpillar. Hi folks, this is David Fine from Keys Moths. And today we are in a backyard butterfly moth uh, kind of adventure. That's right, it's my house. And I'm down here in South Florida. And what I wanted to do is just kind of show you a little bit of a hunt on some of the backyard things that we can expect. Guys, it's springtime mid-April and we're seeing things start to grow. Things are starting to bloom. We've got our hackberry tree is starting to push out new growth. Can't wait for all the stuff that is attracted to that. But guys, there's bugs starting to show up and we want to show and share some of those with you. So stay tuned for this episode. Uh, guys, give me a like and subscribe to the channel if you like the content. We're going to show you and teach you about the butterflies and moths of South Florida. So let's check out some bugs in the backyard. What would a backyard butterfly episode be without a zebra long wing sighting? He's on my fire bush. Let me see if I can get a better angle on him. Well, our state butterfly guys, zebra long wing, Heliconius cheritonia. And he's just chilling. Doesn't really seem to be super cooperative. But, well, maybe he's camera shy. We'll give him that. Come on, zebra. All right, well, he's made an appearance, but we also have on our property line some white peacocks, guys. They're on the Bidens. It's a nice little bug there. Usually these guys are super hard to get this close to. But you know what? When these bugs are enthralled with some uh, nectar, they are enthralled. And <laughs> Look at him. He's just chilling. White peacock, Anardia jatrophy. It's a backyard butterfly. And he is just hanging out there on the Bidens. And we've got some bees pollinating here. Plenty of bees on the Bidens as well. Now, a lot of people don't like these and because they get the stuff all over your clothes. And that's where, you know, we get these shepherd's needle gets its name. These black things that stick in your socks. Uh, these are the seeds, but man, this is probably Florida's best nectar source if there was one. Um, the bees agree very, very much. So we're hoping to do some hackberry butterfly uh, life cycle stuff. We don't have hackberry butterflies to my knowledge in Broward County, uh, but they are found in northern Palm Beach County and Martin County. So we're hoping to go get some hackberry butterflies and some tawny emperors, maybe even some, some question marks and do some life cycle stuff. We were able to get this little hackberry tree grown for you. But reason I actually started this video, I wasn't planning on doing a video. I came out to see my son fishing on the dock. There he is over there. Say hi, buddy. Sup? Sup. He's, he's over there fishing. But... Right on the bank of my canal system, there are, oh wait, look at that. Here's an exotic fish species, guys. Let's see if the camera can pick this up. Right there is a Mayan cichlid. Yeah, he's right on his bed. He's made a bed right there. You got a fish? 
All right, my son's got a fish. So we can break in our butterfly action, see what is it that my son is reeling in. On film. On film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. So we got bugs and fish in the same episode. Bass. Largemouth bass? Yes. Okay. Not a big one. That's okay. Here, get them up. You want me to land them for you? We're going to treat our bass with the utmost of respect. <laughs> if he, Oh, he's going to wrap you. No? Yeah, no. Nope. No. Nope. Oh. Dude, he's a fighter. Ultralight. He's a fighter, man. Okay, on ultralight line. There you go. Yeah. Here, why don't you get that hook out? It's like, it's like the fifth bass, sixth bass. Yeah? Oh, good job. All right, let me see that fish, buddy. Let me see that fish. Good job, dude. Look at that. Good job, buddy. Well, you get a good release on their little, on your little bass there. All right, dude, nice. He's fishing for peacock bass. Good job. But by large mouths are cool. By catch. By catch. All right. I can probably get another angle on this Mayan cichlid that is sitting here on our bed, on her bed. Well, she just came off of her bed. Let's see if she returns. I caught her today, so she's probably skittish. Let's see if she returns. It's all right. Here she comes. Mayan cichlid. This is another exotic species, but they're very pretty. They got green and pink. And yeah, right there. Pretty cool. Okay. Well, anyway, Mayan cichlids are bedding up. So are the large mouths, so are the peacocks. But what I wanted to show you guys, that's not why I came out here. What I wanted to show you is when I came out to see how my son was doing, I saw my Ludwigia, that's just a weed growing on the side of the, of the canal here. This is a primrose plant. And I saw some of the leaves that were missing, like this right here. Whenever you see that, guys, or you see the leaf with like a, only a midrib like this right here, that is an indicator that there are caterpillars eating. And a Ludwigia down in South Florida can only mean one thing. Eumorpha fasciata, the banded sphinx. So guys, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you, actually it was surprised, this one little plant, how many sphinx moth immature stage uh, individuals there are in this one little plant. So let's check this out real quick, guys. All right, so I'm, okay, first off, right here, there is an egg, cream colored egg, and there it is. That is a banded sphinx egg right there, laid right on this plant. And guys, if you were to look on this plant, there's about six or seven eggs just like that, peppered throughout this little tiny plant, okay? And not only are there eggs, but there are also caterpillars. And the first caterpillar I found was this little first instar caterpillar. Look at him, isn't he cute? First instar, just freshly hatched. And they eat their eggshells, that's how I know. You know. Oh, he just popped his little head up. Let's see if I can get there we go, look at that. They, they rest on the mid rib of the plant and he just pops, let me see if we can get it in focus. Pops his little head up and they've got that black tail. And that tail on this species, they lose that tail as, this, as the larvae grows into later instars. But we've got that little caterpillar and I think we've got several more first instar caterpillars on this plant but one of the cool things about this is that not only is there first instar caterpillars but there's also a second instar caterpillar right here crawling you can still see he's still got the longer tail he's turned a little bit of a deeper green and he's got that long, long tail action going on there. And he's going to be crawling up and down this plant here. How cool is he? 
Now, guys, this is not a very big plant. And I can tell you that the amount of larvae that are going to be on this, especially once these eggs hatch, and here's, here's even more. Look at this. There's another baby caterpillar right there. And there's another egg. And I thought there were more. Okay. Well, all that to be said, yeah, I was looking at this plant for about 10 minutes before I even saw this big caterpillar or bigger. This is a third instar caterpillar of the banded sphinx, guys. Look at the big, still got the big horn. Still got the big horn. Yeah, still got the big sphinx-like horn on the butt. But this guy is about to get really, really big, really, really quick. And he's going to get a lot bigger. Let me give you a little size comparison for third instar. This is my index finger. He's about three quarters of an inch long. And at our next instar, he's going to get over an inch probably an inch and a half oh and there's another egg by the way there's another egg right there so guys um this plant if i don't do anything about it this plant right here is going to be eaten right out of house and home there will be no leaves left on this if i don't do something about it so i am actually going to uh, help this guys out and transfer them to other plants or maybe even take a couple of them inside and see if um, we can raise some. But before we do that, we've got other Ludwigias. Let me see if there's any Lud uh, caterpillars or eggs on this. Yes, yeah, so here, here you go. Check it out. There's another caterpillar right there. Oh, another bigger caterpillar. Look, right on the midrib, right there. Bigger caterpillar. Right there. Tell me if you can see them. Comment down below if you're having a hard time seeing these. Because, boy, they are camouflaged. But look at the eggs, guys. Two more eggs. I'm just twisting this plant to see what else we got. Upside down. We got another egg right there. Another egg right there. Oh, my goodness. That just shows you. It's pretty easy to find stuff. Now... Look at this, this has been mowed. I wonder if there's anything on this little mowed plant. I'm not seeing anything quite there. All right, let's see. I got a bigger plant right over here. This one's actually got flowers on it. Guys, this is a primrose. This is the Ludwigia flower. If you ever wanted to look on Ludwigia for sphinx moth caterpillars. That's the flower. They always grow right on the border of freshwater canals and lakes and ponds and stuff like that. South Florida, or pretty much all of the state of Florida, the Carolinas, Georgia. Yeah, there's an egg right there. But I'm not seeing quite the number of caterpillars and larvae on this plant that I did on the smaller plants. And I wonder why that is. Maybe I'm just blind. Could be I'm just blind. A little bit of both. Little bit of both. My, Lorenzo loves cracking whenever he can. He'll just throw a little, a little jab in there whenever he can. But there's also a bunch of ants on this plant. And that could be why there's not so many caterpillars or even eggs on a plant if there's, if there's ants all over it. Maybe they found the food source. So we'll keep looking though, guys. All right, here's, I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Here's one more plant. We'll take a look at one more plant before we go. And right real quick, Lorenzo just got another hit. Well, we'll see. Guys, here's one more, one more egg right here. There's another egg. My goodness. Your duck is following you, son? Okay. 
Okay, I just had a, a gnat fly up my nose. That's fun. Fish? Yep. Lorenzo's got another. Oh, he just let you go. Well, this plant right here has got more eggs. I don't see any caterpillars on him. But that's a great indicator, guys. How cool is that, that you can just walk out in your backyard and on some weeds, if you know what to look for, you find some find, find some cool. Okay, ones. folks, I hope that was an encouragement to you as I'm kind of in my backyard. Find some cool butterflies just on a flower here and there, but then a massive sphinx moth infestation on my Ludwigia, on my primrose. Guys, it's super easy. It literally took no effort at all. And you can do the same. You just gotta kind of know a few things what to look for. So, guys, hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Check out our website. It's uh, www.keysmoths.com where we're gonna show you all about the butterflies and moths of South Florida. And um, guys, comment down below if you, if you have some suggestions on what you think I should look for next. So, guys, take care and let's enjoy South Florida. Catch some fish. <laughs>